When two people are having a private conversation, they expect it to be private, to have confidentiality for what's said back and forth. Well, if we're sending sensitive information over our networks, we also want privacy and confidentiality for that information that we're sending back and forth. And one great tool that we can put in our Batman tool belt to help enforce and provide confidentiality for data as it goes across our networks is a virtual private network, a VPN. And that's what we're gonna take a look at right here in this video. So let's use this network topology as a backdrop for our conversation regarding virtual private networks. And let's imagine this site on the left here is the headquarters site. And over here we have the branch office and we've got Bob right here at the headquarters site. And to get connectivity between the branch office and the headquarters site, they are leveraging the internet for connectivity. So when Bob sends packets and traffic to a server over at the branch office, that traffic would go something like this, through the routers, through the firewall, through this router, through the internet and all the pieces there, and finally end up at the branch office and at the server. Ta-da! And the challenge is, is that if there's an eavesdropper anywhere in that path who is listening to the traffic, they can copy that traffic, and if it's not protected with encryption, they can go ahead and make sense of the data. So if there's sensitive information going between Bob and the server at the branch office, we've just ruined confidentiality because the eavesdropper now has access and can make sense of that data. So one of the solutions that we can use is to use encryption. And we've touched on this in a previous nugget, but encryption is the concept of scrambling the data in such a fashion so that if anybody gets a hold of it, without the right keys to unlock that data or decrypt that data, it's just a bunch of gobbledygook. So the attacker or the eavesdropper on the internet eavesdropping on our traffic, if it's encrypted, they can't make sense of it and it's of no value to them. So a question might be, well, how do we make sure that all of our traffic is encrypted? Well, we have a few options there. We have some applications. So if we pulled out our smartphone and we were using a messaging app or some other app, it's very likely that individual applications are doing encryption before they're sending data back and forth between your mobile device and some other device. So the apps could implement encryption on their own. However, the problem is that that's not going to cover everything that's going into and out of your phone over, for example, a Wi-Fi connection. Case in point, if Lois with her mobile device opens up something that runs Telnet. Telnet is a, an application that can be used to remotely connect to another system, and it's not encrypted. So if Lois opens up a Telnet application that's not encrypted, and she starts communicating over a network, that traffic is then subject to eavesdropping, and the attacker could learn sensitive information like usernames and passwords and anything else that the attacker captured as Lois was communicating using a protocol, a set of rules, if you will, that didn't include any type of confidentiality or encryption. So another answer to the question, how do we protect and encrypt everything, would be we could use a virtual private network. And with a virtual private network, everything that goes through the network adapter, once the VPN is turned on, everything is encrypted as it goes through. So if we wanted to provide confidentiality and encryption services between everybody at headquarters office when they talk to the branch office and vice versa, we could implement our virtual private network. Maybe we put it at the firewall. So that is one end of the VPN tunnel, that's referred to as the path for the virtual private network, and we could have that VPN tunnel go from the firewall all the way up to another device, maybe they have another firewall up at the branch office up to here. So with this VPN tunnel established between the firewall at headquarters and the firewall at the branch office, now Bob over here, when he sends traffic, it would go through the switches, through the routers, hit the firewall, at that point it would be encrypted and put into this logical VPN tunnel, this VPN path that goes between this firewall and that firewall. So anybody eavesdropping anywhere in the tunnel, all they're gonna get is gobbledygook because they don't understand how to decrypt the data, the eavesdroppers don't. And then once it hits the firewall of the branch office, the firewall there decrypts it and then it passes it on to its final destination. So if Bob was talking to a server, that's gonna be transparent to Bob. All Bob knows is that he's communicating with the server and the firewalls are providing both ends of the tunnel for the encryption and decryption respectively. Now this type of tunnel that's going between two sites, our branch office site and our headquarters site, it has a special type of name when we're connecting two sites together with a tunnel. And it's referred to as a site to site VPN. So whenever you hear the term, hey, we've got a site to site VPN, it just means that there's two devices, one at each end between two sites, that are encrypting and decrypting the data so it can securely cross over the network and not be vulnerable to eavesdroppers. But wait, there's more. Another type of a virtual private network, a VPN that we can build, is referred to as a remote access VPN. It would go something 
like this. We have a user, and let's say that user is on the internet, and let's call that user Larry. So Larry is on the internet, maybe he's at his home, at a hotel, and Larry would like to access a server or some other resources at the headquarters site, but all he has is the internet to go ahead and cross to get there. So we don't want to have Larry communicate nakedly over the internet because then that traffic would be subject to eavesdroppers. So a solution is we could have Larry build a VPN from his computer and build his own VPN tunnel from his own location all the way to the edge of our network. In this case, we're gonna have our firewall acting as the head end device for the VPN. So Larry's computer would have a, a client or an application that could build that VPN tunnel from his device to the headquarter site and then everything that goes between Larry and the headquarter site would all be encrypted and protected from eavesdropping because of that VPN tunnel. And when an individual computer, it could be a mobile device or a laptop, when it builds a VPN tunnel to a head end site, that's referred to as remote access VPN. And one of the benefits of that again is we're protecting, we're encrypting all the traffic as it goes from Larry's machine through the VPN tunnel and his computer, his device, all the way to the other end of the VPN tunnel. In this example, it's the firewall. In this nugget, we've learned about a couple different types of VPNs and the value they bring to the table, and that is to encrypt data so anybody eavesdropping on that data won't be able to make sense of it, and that helps keep our data secure. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.